Al? Carbohydrates and caffeine. I certainly hope that isn't your breakfast. I had tofu and broccoli before you got here. But thanks for the concern. Mind telling me why I was called out here away from my own hearty meal? Came across one of these. Hey, come here. Ah, uh, yes. A handcuffed child. That would be my department. Well, I have to admit, he wasn't actually handcuffed when I found him. I'm Maxine Gray. I'm a social worker. What's your name? Manual. Manual. Manual what? Manual labor. Well, you didn't have to drag me out here. I could have come and seen Mr. Labor in detention. Well, there's something here I think you ought to see. If Officer Bonero undoes those cuffs, you promise not to run away? Sure. Because I could ditch you two old fossils with a brisk walk. Al? That was an encouraging pat on the head, because he is so amusing. You've been squatting here? This place is unquestionably toxic. We're probably getting cancer right this very moment. You didn't think about that, did you? Over 24 hours, you ingest about the same amount of carcinogen as smoking a quarter pack a day. So I quit smoking. Comes out about it, even. Okay. Maybe you did think about it. Not your average street rat. We should call NASA. Tell them they're missing a few things. Lauren is one minute late for school. One minute. And Mrs. Schley, we made her get a pass from the office. Is that fair? It's part of our education. I suppose your daughter's never late. Okay. You're a better parent than I am. No, I have a better alarm clock. What's this? No, it's from appellate court. What do they want? The clerk is asking us to assemble the case record on Spelman versus Harper. The one you set aside the jury's record. Oh, my God. I'm being appealed. You're not being appealed, your decision is. Judge, we all knew this was coming. It's only been eight weeks. The plaintiff steamrolled the case in the court. Yeah, well, Stu Collins, steamrolling is his style. I realize it's difficult not to take it personally, especially the first time around, but appeals are like the stock market. Great. I'm getting killed there, too. No matter how much information you have, you can't control it. So there's no use getting yourself all worked up. You know, you're absolutely right. Who's the judge? Alan Jackson. Action Jackson? Great. A judicial conservative. That's all I need. What's the basis of the appeal? You're not letting this go. I'm, I'm allowed to be curious. I can arrange for you to get the brief Stu Collins submitted. But I don't advise it. I promise not to obsess. Get out of here. No, really. I won't. No, I mean, get out of here so you can enter with due pomp and circumstance. You know, this is my courtroom. Of course it is, Your Honor. Good morning, Donna. When I say it is. Here's a shocker. It turns out your name is not manual labor. It isn't. Joaquin Acosta, age 15, in DCF custody since 1997. Have your parents or any other family member contacted you since then? Yeah, when Muffy graduated Harvard and when Chip married into the royal family. You steal these computers and then you sell them, is that correct? Counterfactual. I find them in dumpsters and rehabilitate them. Like what you people do to kids. Quite the little entrepreneur. Look at me. I have a job. I'm healthy. No scurvy, scabies, or scoliosis. Now why can't you people just let me alone? Joaquin. Okay. Back again. Hurrah, hurrah. A word? We can't leave you alone because you're 15 years old. And you're living in a carcinogenic waste dump. That's a big-brained little boy. He's a chronic runaway. He's bolted from every foster family we've placed him with. Well, this thing about uh, computers, where is his educational assessment? Forwarded to the last school that expelled him. 
As you may have guessed, he was off the charts in both math and language. His IQ is over 150. 150? The boy's a genius. <laughs> yes, especially when it comes to burning foster families, being expelled from school and running away. The police have him on trespassing, then there's the truancy. If any of those computers turn out to be stolen, he'll be sentenced to Long Lane. Maybe they'll be able to control him. You want to incarcerate him? Save yourself the heartache. That's awfully big of you, Susie. Thinking of my emotions first and not your placement statistics. We can't help all of them. We have to pick and choose. Trust me. Don't choose, Joaquin. Marcy Noble, age six, was admitted to St. Timothy's Hospital last month after a series of seizures. The 23rd hospitalization since her birth. What's the medical explanation? Well, that's the problem, Your Honor. There's no explanation. Uh, Marcy failed to thrive as an infant. She's been plagued by a series of chronic illnesses since birth. It's the state's assertion that Marcy is sick because her mother's making her sick. That is completely false. Uh, Mr. Morton. I'm sorry, Your Honor. The state is alleging that Miss Noble suffers from a syndrome known as Munchausen by proxy, a rare form of child abuse in which the parent or caregiver makes another person ill to gratify his or her own need for attention. We're requesting an order of temporary custody. Your Honor. Is there imminent physical danger? Yes, there is, Your Honor. Marcy Noble's seizures are increasing in intensity and frequency. Okay. Now, Mr. Morton. Your Honor. Ms. Noble is a loving, devoted parent of a chronically ill child. The guilty party here is the HMO system, a system my client has publicly backed. Publicity is an important component of Munchausen syndrome. It took 18 months before they approved a visit to a neurologist. When they finally got to see the specialist, he refused to do the necessary test, citing cost as a factor. Ms. Noble has testified to Congress on the subject of health care. She has devoted her life to her daughter and in the process helped thousands of other Americans. All the while, Your Honor, raising two other children who are, by the way, healthy and thriving. Thank you, Mr. Morton. I'd like to hear from Marcy's physician. Let's uh, continue this tomorrow morning at uh, 10. Next case. I'm really sorry, Judge Gray. About what? The appeal? It's been decided. What? Oh. No, that it's happening. You scared me, Donna. Sorry. His family name is Robertson. He's a retired police officer. She teaches high school chemistry. Gee, can I call him mom and dad? You may have had bad luck with foster parents in the past, but these people are good eggs. They're going to have rules. There are many more rules in detention, which is where some people think you belong. May I ask you something? When were you last challenged? And no smart mouth, okay? Please just answer the question. In third grade, there was this teacher said if anyone could figure out the surface area of a sphere, there'd be no homework. You figured out the surface area of a sphere at age eight. I was six in the third grade. <laughs> Stu Collins said I'd violate the sanctity of the jury room. Yeah, well, did he mean that in a bad way? Hey, Briz, you think you could drop those transcripts off on the way home? Yeah, okay. Okay, I can wait till tomorrow. Bye. Lauren! What is that? What are you doing? I'm to see my dribbling. You're dribbling? Since when do you dribble? Uncle Vincent taught me. Well, you're not allowed to dribble in the house. But it's dark outside. That's because it's late and you should be in bed. I still have spelling homework. How could you leave it so late? You're cranky. Yeah, I'm cranky. I trust you to get your work done. All right, okay. Excuse me? You're not fun anymore. Honey, what's the matter? I'm getting appealed. Oh, no. I know, I know. I'm not supposed to take it personally. I sure as hell would. People thinking I made a bad decision. Well, everyone gets appealed. Yeah. But it's so soon. And, uh, your first jury case. Well, it's water under the bridge. <laughs> Fry 
fried egg sandwich on a hard roll to go. Okay, that'll be two twenty-five. Judge Gray. Stu, here you are. Join me. Uh, I'm just getting something to go. While you wait, then. I guess you heard. You're appealing my decision. Nothing personal. I guess I have to commend you on how quickly you work. Well, it's not every day that a brand new judge throws out a jury verdict. I wasn't about to let any grass grow under that one. Well, as long as it's not personal. Regardless of how this thing works out, I hope that we can maintain a professional friendship. Why? I'm in juvenile matters. You're a civil litigator. It's unlikely that we'd meet again. Okay. Forget the professional aspect. We could just be friends. Here again, I fail to see the advantage. Wow, this appeal really has you hacked, doesn't it? Stu, we didn't like each other in law school. I see no reason to change that. Amy, you're not going to last very long in this job if you don't learn to distance yourself. Fried egg in a row. That's me. Here we go. Goodbye, Judge Gray. May the best man win, so to speak. I first treated Marcy when she was two years old. Her symptoms were always the same. Unexplained fevers, seizures, and vomiting. She's been tested for everything under the sun, but the cause of her illness remains elusive. What made you finally call DCF? After Marcy's last seizure, I ran a blood test and discovered her medication present at alarming levels, far beyond what I prescribed. That's when I made the call. But it was a blood test that I asked him to perform. Mrs. Noble, you'll have your chance. I'm sorry, but I simply can't... Okay. I'm sorry. So you're saying the, uh, the same medication that can stop the seizures can cause them? If she were given enough of an extra dosage, yes. Did anyone actually see Mrs. Noble administer the drug? No. Emily Noble meets every characteristic of Munchausen by proxy. She's a former medical office worker. She's proactive, almost obsessive about her daughter's medical treatment. And she loves the publicity. I do not. But I will do whatever I have to to get help for my daughter. And if that means standing in front of a camera or testifying before Congress, then I will do it. Doctors don't like to be challenged. But when it's your own child, uh, Dr. Eden is a mandated reporter. I'm sorry, Your Honor, but my client is bearing two burdens. The illness of her child and this specious attack. All right, all right. Everybody just be quiet for a moment. How precarious is the child's situation? At her current rate of deterioration, she won't live to see her next birthday. All right. Let's proceed to trial. on earth is all this? Oh, great. Cookie dough ice cream, microwave bagel dogs, and beer. That's not food. Yeah, it is. Bachelor food. Doug moved in with his girlfriend, and he took the refrigerator. Well, why didn't you buy it from him? Because it's the only thing in the apartment she approved of, including Doug. So now you get all the peace and quiet you need. Yeah, unfortunately, I can't afford peace and quiet. What about that huge advance from your publisher? That comes in increments. Very small increments. Are you thinking of moving in here? Here? <laughs> no, 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 no. You looking for a roommate? Yeah, you know of anybody? Brenda McGregor. <laughs> <laughs> Brenda McGregor, 64 years old. I'll put up a note on the bulletin board at work. Ah, great. Lawyers and felons. If you have to choose, take the felon. So I got to the end of the week to find somebody. The lease is up and the landlord is circling. Don't even think about moving back here. How many times did I say now? Watch out for that old reverse psychology. Which one of us, him or me? Maxine, I hate to interrupt. Oh, no. Oh, no, what? The expression of smug superiority is neither seemly nor attractive. I know. A number of times I've seen it plastered on your face, I should know. Is there a problem with Joaquin Acosta? You'll recall I tried to spare you the time and heartache. A certain amount of triage is necessary. Uh, did he skip school? No, it's one way of putting it. Get to the point. Maxine, you've trumped me numerous times. I will give you that. But I'm not wrong this time. You shouldn't have bet on this kid. Susie, for God's sake. I got a call from the cops. He's run away. 
Have we learned nothing here today? So, you're a psychology grad student? You must put in a lot of hours at school. Yeah, so uh, I wouldn't be spending much time here. And uh, I have quite a substantial fellowship in case you're worried about rent. Um, I'm kind of a loner, so you wouldn't have the anxiety of wild parties. Uh, also, I don't have a girlfriend. Oh, join the club. <laughs> so I decided to put my uh, social life on hold until I achieve my career goals. That shows a lot of focus, Ted. Oh, is uh, that your grandfather? Uh, no, that's Albert Einstein. Einstein. I also noticed some bagels in the kitchen. Are you Jewish? No. Would that matter if I was? Oh, hey, uh, got nothing against them. It's just that they own everything, you know, from the country. <laughs> I don't have to live with them, too. <laughs> so you're a psychology student? Yeah. That means someday troubled people will come to you for help? Yeah. Great. Marcy was born almost two months premature. Um, first, her kidneys failed, and she went on dialysis. And then she got pneumonia. She should have died. Everybody told me that. But she didn't. Marcy's always had a very strong will to survive. When did your daughter's seizures begin? Um, just after Marcy was born, I went in. Uh, and checked on her in her crib, and she wasn't breathing. The doctors couldn't tell us why it had happened. They said it was one of those things, and they sent us home. Isn't it true that after her first birthday, Marcy's health improved? Yeah, for a little while. Then it was um, asthma and allergic reactions. Then it was her digestive tract. They said she had Crohn's disease, but she didn't. And then when the seizures started, they said... It was epilepsy, but it wasn't. All the tests and all the pain that she's had. And nobody can help us. I mean, that's the reason I went public. Not just for myself, but for all the other sick children and their parents. Uh, the record says that um, in recent years you started to, to treat Marcy yourself. You gave her injections, you changed her feeding tubes. Yes, that's because my insurance was running out. I can't afford in-home help, and I do have a medical background. Mrs. Noble, did you give Marcy any seizure medication during your last visit? No. Then how do you explain the orderly's contention that you were seen leaning over your daughter just before her last seizure? I was brushing her teeth. So what I'm hearing is that we have no proof whatsoever that Mrs. Noble is responsible for her daughter's condition. There is a preponderance. Well, this is a court of law, Mr. Plymouth. It requires proof, not, not pure allegation. You're asking me to rule off a gut feeling. Are, are you already laying grounds for an appeal? With all due respect, Your Honor, we're more concerned with Marcy Noble than the appellate court. Well, I'm concerned about Marcy, too. <clears throat> Since her mother's influence is the one variable in question. I'm going to issue a temporary restraining order against Emily Noble. Oh. She's not to see her daughter for a period of one week. No. Please. Objection, Your Honor. Marcy Noble is very ill. To deny her her mother at this time would be very traumatic. I see no other way, Mr. Morton. And it's only for a short time. Oh, thank God. If Marcy's condition changes in either direction, we'll be closer to an explanation. <sighs> this court's in recess. You want me to hope my daughter stays sick? What kind of person are you? Hi. If he is so smart, why would he come back here? Because he's a child. Put those things away. What are you hiding, Marquis? Nothing. Nothing. That's not a genius answer. Come on. What's happening? What's happening? Come here. Uh. 
Was this your girlfriend? Give it. Huh? May I see that, please? Somebody important to you? My mother. Then you'd better take care of it. Medical records? Uh, great. More reading. What's that? The latest research on Munchausen's by proxy syndrome. Since when do you care what I'm reading? You thought I was reading Stu Collins' brief on my appeal, didn't you? Well, so what if I was? Took a friendly interest, I'm sorry. You think the fact that I'm being appealed has made me inflexible in the courtroom, don't you? Since when do you care what I think? I'm being presented with allegations and guesses. I'm being forced to make a decision without any hard evidence. Excuse me for being a little cranky. <laughs> Just ask what you were reading. I mean, Emily Noble could either be a psycho or a saint. And when I look at her, I... I honestly can't tell. So my demands on counsel have nothing to do with the appeal. I've almost completely forgotten about it. As a matter of fact... I can see that. Your Honor, despite a history as a runaway, Joaquin Acosta was placed in the home of Mr. and Mrs. Stephen Robertson after he was found living in an abandoned warehouse. Not surprisingly, he took the first opportunity to run away again, which puts him in contempt of court. At this time, the state would like to suggest that he be sent to Long Lane. Has the boy committed any other crime? Just truancy, Your Honor. Uh, there is the outstanding question of computers found in his possession. Judge Fowler, if I may. Oh, one of yours, Miss Gray. I'm not completely satisfied Joaquin was actually running away. Uh, Your Honor, Miss Gray is the social worker who apprehended him. On reflection, Joaquin may simply have been visiting his former domicile to pick up personal effects, in which case I would suggest he simply be returned to his foster home. All right, then. Pending the discovery of whether or not the computer components were stolen, I'll bind the matter over for trial. Hey, Judge, I'd like to represent myself. <laughs> Young man, are you saying you want to act as your own counsel? I realize the significance of my request, Your Honor, but my lawyer, Mr. Burroughs, and I seem to disagree on the best way to proceed. Therefore, I would like to represent myself. Is that true? Oh, yeah. How old are you? We're 16 and 7 months, sir. Has Joaquin received any sort of educational assessment from DCF? Yes, Your Honor. He's well above average on all levels. He seems a little crazy to me. Any history of mental illness? No, Your Honor. He's just a smart ass. Yes, Your Honor. It's not difficult. Neither is Joaquin. Your Honor. Good afternoon, Judge Gray. How'd you know it was me? I memorized the cadence of your walk. Very authoritative, yet kind and fair. Oh. Well, thank you. I'm uh, thinking of signing up for Krav Maga. Do you uh, know what that is? Some kind of self-defense? Israeli army. Can't be too careful in this city. Yeah. Do you want to take part? I uh, know. I think I'll just depend on my authoritative walk. Judge Gray, do you have siblings? Uh, two. Why? Uh, may I ask if you get along with them? Mostly. Why? I, I live with my sister, but we're not speaking right now. She disapproves of my husband, which is completely narrow-minded of her because she's never even met Oscar. Just because he's in jail, she thinks he's a bad person. Well, people are funny that way. But if she loves me, don't you think she should just accept my husband for who he is? Ordinarily, I'd say yes, but Oscar is a special case. I mean, being convicted for murder is not a personality quirk. But he didn't Even do if it. he didn't do it, there is a stigma attached. So give your sister some time to deal with it. Hey, Harry, go on. I wish you were my sister. Donna! Sorry. Thanks. It's not very big. Excuse me? The apartment. There's hardly room enough to spit. You, uh, you spit a lot? What about parking? Uh, street parking, but I never had a problem. 
Yeah, you wouldn't blow sunshine up my ass, would you? No, I don't think I'd do that. What about the telephone? Uh, one line, but we could get two if you think we need it. Yeah, I do most of my work on the phone. You a telemarketer? Sure. I'm a telemarketer. What am I wearing? Chanel, number five. Oh, you want me to touch myself? I will if you will. Hmm. Yeah, I do accents too. French, Irish, Ebonics. I'm sorry, I can't go against the court order. Please, she is my child. Who's paged? What's going on? My daughter is dying, and he still won't let me in to see her. Well, if he did, he'd be breaking the law. Mrs. Noble, what happened? Marcy's had a series of seizures. I paged her, Judge. Marcy's mom has had no contact with her. I'm asking that no visitation order be vacated. Please, Judge Gray, I have to be with my baby. Mr. Plymouth? We're not satisfied there's been no contact. My client never entered the hospital room. I believe she's shown great restraint. Oh, my God, my daughter is dying in there, and I am out here arguing in a corridor. We have statements confirming Mrs. Noble's been on the ward. How do we know she didn't enter Marcy's room? Oh, do you really think I would jeopardize everything like that? No one saw her enter the room? No, Your Honor. All I wanted to be was close to her. I... My daughter is dying, Judge. What would you have done in that situation? Please, I am begging you. Don't let her die alone. Please, just try to imagine how I feel. Please. Uh, I can't risk it. I stand by my ruling. If, uh, if she defies it, she is to be arrested. What? I... Are you prepared to live with this and your conscience? Yes, I am. Get your client to go home. How can you do this? My God, if this was your child, what would you have done? <laughs> I before E except after C, remember? I hate that rule. You hate all rules. You're a rule hater. What's up? Oh, I can't believe you circle this guy. He's a former Green Beret. He's probably very neat. And handy with a flamethrower. What's for dinner? Cold pizza? It's perfect. No school today. I think I'll go upstairs wet. Quiet. He's still angry? It was two days ago. He wasn't all that cranky. She's your daughter. She clings. I don't cling. This guy's a snake trainer. He wouldn't necessarily bring his work home with him. When do I cling? I notice you circled only men. Oh, I'm sure that's a coincidence. You're talking about this appeal, aren't you? That's one example. I don't know why it's got me all worked up. You like to be right. You got that from your father. <sighs> My father? Now you've passed it on to Lauren. You still mad? Nope. Honey, you can tell the truth. Lauren, I'm sorry if I'm not always in the best mood. Especially lately. But I'm just like anybody else. Got my good days and my bad days. I'm sorry I hurt your feelings. But now you gotta let it go. I have to read this by tomorrow. You're not the only one with pressure. You're right.
She regained consciousness early this morning. Any long-term effects of the seizures? Not as far as we can tell. She seems fine, given what she's been through. Hi, Marcy. I'm Judge Gray. How are you feeling? Where's my mom? You're going to see her in a few days? Why can't I see her now? Marcy, right now I need to ask you some questions. About yesterday, when you got sick. I'm always sick. Do you remember your first seizure? I was thirsty. Did anyone bring you a drink? Sometimes when I'm thirsty from the tubes, my mother gives me bits of ice. Is that what happened yesterday? I, I can't really remember. I don't think so. Well, we need to know, Marcy. Big decisions depend on it. Are you trying to take me away from my mother? I'm, I'm just trying to help. I don't want to leave my mom. She does everything for me. I'll die with her. <laughs> I'm not trying to hurt you. I'm just trying to help. <laughs> and why did you tell she couldn't see me? <laughs> She's my mother. She needs to be with me. <laughs> Well, Marcy, it's a complicated situation. And... Who told you that? What? That I wouldn't let your mother see you? <laughs> did your mother tell you that? When did she tell you? She gave you the ice. My God, she puts the drug in the ice. Judge Gray, I'm not certain the girl's memories can be trusted given that she suffered so many seizures. It's a good argument for appeal, Mr. Morton. Is it over? Can I go in now? Can I see Marcy? Uh, no, Mrs. Noble, you cannot. I'm granting an OTC pending a criminal investigation. This isn't happening. Just save the histrionics for the cameras, Mrs. Noble. You're a mother. How can you deny Yeah, me? I'm a mother. You're lucky that has nothing to do with my judgment. You're lucky I have to be objective. So you're married. Yes. And your husband? Is away. All the time. Really? Yes. Uh, and I'm going to law school at night, so you'll probably never even see me around here. Huh. I'm a very um, clean and private person, Vincent. And, and since I have a wheat, lactose, and gluten sensitivity, my diet is very restricted. So you'll never find me stealing your food. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, good. This apartment's really quite spacious. How do you feel about cats? I'm um, against them. <sighs> Wonderful. I have an allergy to cat dander. <laughs> you should see me ten minutes in the same building with a cat and my face swells up like a basketball. <laughs> well, that won't be a problem. <sighs> so, Miss uh, Kozlowski Pants. Oh, Donna, please. Donna, I think this could work out. <sighs> That'd be great. I'm really desperate to get out of my current situation. This apartment isn't far from work. Now, where do you work? Hartford County Courthouse. I'm a court clerk. I got your name off of the bulletin board there. Maybe you know my sister, Amy Gray. She's a judge there. Oh, my God. You're Judge Gray's brother? I work for Judge Gray. Wow. That's weird. Oh. <laughs> Small world, huh? So, when do you think you can move in? Okay, wait. What? I couldn't possibly become your roommate without Judge Gray's approval. Why? I don't know. Could be a conflict of interest or something. Donna, I, I really don't think that Amy would care where you live. Couldn't take the chance. I mean, Judge Gray is my mentor. If this would make her uncomfortable, I absolutely couldn't do it. So none of the computers were stolen? Well, not that we could find. Then there are no criminal charges against me at all? Not that we can find. Then there's no reason to send me to a secure facility. Mr. Acosta, that's for me to decide. 
Sorry, Your Honor. Uh, Your Honor, we're not arguing that Mr. Acosta has to be locked up because he's a criminal. We're arguing that he should be assigned to a secure setting where he can't run away and live in abandoned warehouses. Your Honor, I would like to call Maxine Gray to the stand. Oh, hell. Consider yourself sworn in. What do you see when you look at me, Miss Gray? A very intelligent boy in danger of ruining his life. How intelligent? I think the ruining his life part of that sentence is more pertinent. Have you ever met anyone as smart as me? No. I tell myself to read. I tell myself to fix computers. I've taught myself everything all my life. Now, can you find one reason why I couldn't teach myself to live alone? You mean, uh, earn a living, pay the bills? Stay clean. Yes, you could do all of that. But you're still a complete idiot when it comes to life. Hey, objection. Which is all right. Fifteen-year-old boys are supposed to be idiots. There are things you don't understand. Things that come not from intelligence, but from experience. Name one. One? Social skills, for example? He has a mouth on him. I'm not going to be learning much about social skills in jail now, am I? Long Lane is not a jail, Your Honor. Well, Ms. Lemieux, you can dance around the semantics all you want. When you're locked up, it's jail. Miss Gray, you're experienced. What do you think I should do with him? I did have one idea, but it's a long shot. Bright Horizons is a residential program, college prep. Forget it. You'd have your own place. Why is it a long shot? Oh, waiting lists, admissions requirements. It would have to be a unanimous recommendation. Your Honor, Mr. Burroughs, Ms. Lemieux, myself, and, of course, uh, my supervisor. Maxine, make it happen. I thought you'd be interested to know the criminal division has issued a warrant on Emily Noble's arrest. Well, they bury her into the jail. What about the presumption of innocence? I'll leave that to the jury. I know where I stand. Uh, this is Gray. Don't go away. Stuart? I guess you heard. What? Judge Jackson upheld your verdict. My appeal was denied. When? This morning? Huh. I guess I was thinking about more important matters. Congratulations. You don't mean that. Well, the upside is you don't have to hate me. Not for the appeal, anyway. Look, uh, now that all this is over, can I take you out to dinner? You're asking me out? For dinner. Why? Because I appreciate a worthy opponent. <sighs> Stuart, the judge is not the opponent. The opposing counsel is. And besides, it, it, it's, it's professionally unsound. But you said it yourself. We're in different divisions. There's no conflict of interest. <laughs> but I don't even like you. I bet I can change your mind. Okay, I, I know what this is. Uh, I didn't let you get away with anything in my courtroom, and then you were unable to overturn my ruling. Your male ego's hurt, and now you want to compensate by turning me into a girl. That's ridiculous. I'm fully aware that you're a formidable woman. Well, let me put it this way. I'd rather lick my floors clean than have one drink with you. And what was that about? My verdict stands. Congratulations. Anything else? Yeah. You asked me out. And you said no. Bruce, what do you think? Good. Judge Gray, what are you doing here? Judge Gray, Vincent and I are here to ask your permission to live together. What? Donna feels like she needs your seal of approval to be my roommate. You're your roommate? 
Donna's going to be your roommate? I saw the notice at work uh, on the bulletin board. I had no idea he was your brother, Judge Gray. I, I swear. You don't need my approval, Donna. That's what I said. I mean, it's a free country. Do what you want. It wouldn't bother you? No. Well, good then. Let's have some champagne. I've already approved of Donna, and I heard a rumor that someone's verdict was upheld. Oh, wow. That's great. I'm so not surprised. <laughs> congratulations, Amy. Yeah, congratulations. Oh, can I make the speech? Well, of course. Go ahead. Some people believe that before we're born, when we're still in spirit form, we make a deal with the universe. Choose the families we're born into. We have different reasons based on the lessons we need to learn. I'm not sure what I was thinking when I chose mine. But it's obvious why Judge Gray chose hers. I'm just really glad I could be a part of it. God bless us, everyone. Amen. <laughs> That's lucky. When the heat of lightning cracks the shadow and perhaps the shadows in the calm of the wind blows the leaves down your street. What's happening?